everyone. I'm Bradley Sward, Assistant Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And today, this video is going to take a look at conversions between decimal numbers and hexadecimal numbers when we're dealing with the unsigned data types. First up, we're going to take a look at converting from decimal base 10 to hexadecimal base 16. So the chart here, you can see how that works. I'm starting with the number 422 and I'm trying to convert that down into its hexadecimal component. So the algorithm goes as such, you take your number, 422 in this case, and you divide by 16, and what you get out of that, the arithmetic, the division of this gets a little tricky because there's a lot going on with large numbers, but you get 26 is the quotient, the whole number portion of the division, and the remainder is a six. And Remember, we got to keep the remainders. We, the remainders are actually what we use to get the result at the end. But the quotient is used to reduce down until we get to zero, and then we know we don't have any more digits we have to compute. So taking the 26 and bringing it down to the second line, taking that 26 divided by 16, the whole number part of that is 1, the remainder part of that is 10, that's where the A comes from, so we still have a quotient larger than zero, so we have to go at least one more time and take that one and divide by 16 to get zero for the whole portion and one for the remainder. So now that the quotient is zero, there's nothing more to compute because this thing will just be zero, 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 zero forevermore after we've reached zero for the quotient. So then what we do is we've done all the math and now we just have to look at the remainders and we write them on, you know, we write them left to right as we go back up on the chart. So the one goes first, then the A, then the six. So A16 is the answer to the hexadecimal uh, conversion of 422. And if you want to look at a different video, you can take 422 and work its way back into hexadecimal or not another video in a couple slides here and you can see that this is the correct answer. So as I was saying, the arithmetic can get a little tricky, dividing by 16 by large numbers. It's not a number we divide by very often, at least outside of computer science, so you just kind of have to watch out to make sure you do everything like you're supposed to. So here in this case, a larger number, 48,879, it's some value, 15, 16 bits of storage if we were talking binary, so it should be about three or four, probably four digits of hexadecimal when we work it down. So here, take a look, and let's see what kind of answer we get for this conversion. The algorithm is exactly the same as before, and will basically be exactly the same, it's just a matter of how many reductions, how many divisions do I have to do to get the quotient back down to zero. So 48,879 divided by 16 is 3,054 remainder 15 remainder F. So then 3,054 divided by 16 gets you down to 190 remainder 14, 14E. 14 e. 190 divided by 16 is 11 remainder E, remainder 14. And then 11 divided by 16 is zero remainder 11, which is a B. So now that we have the quotient of zero one more time, we take the remainders and we work our way backwards from bottom up. So the B, the E, the E, the F, that is the hexadecimal component. That is the conversion beef is 48,879 in hexadecimal. And the next slides will show you that we can go exactly in reverse and work our way back from beef to 48879. The arithmetic is a little trickier now going from hexadecimal back to our normal base 10 decimal system, but other than the arithmetic being difficult, it's still one algorithm. You pretty much do the same thing over and over and over again, and as long as your arithmetic is correct, you are absolutely certain to have the correct result. So this value, one, two, three, four, and now we have to start worrying, like, is that decimal? Is that hexadecimal? Is that octal? What base system am I using? Because it's not inherently clear much of the time, even a binary number, one, one, zero, one, 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 is that binary? Is that base 10? Is that hex? It could be hex. We don't know. So sometimes we like to put a little subscript after our number, something to indicate what base system we're using, especially if we're going to be 
moving between two or three or four base systems as we need to. But anyway, coming back here. So one, two, three, four, and hex, a conversion. So just like when we were looking at the binary videos, each digit is basically a power of 16 representation of some number. So the four at the end is 16 to the zeroth power. That's the ones digit. The three in this number is the 16s digit. The two in this number is the 16 squared, 256 digits. And then the one in this case is 16 cubed, which is 4,096. That, you know, each one of those is 4,096. And as, as, you, as you can imagine, the math gets a little tricky on this. However, it's just a simple addition of multiplied terms. So 1 times 16 cubed plus 2 times 16 squared plus 3 times 16 to the first power plus 4 times 16 to the zeroth power gets us our solution. And those parentheses are absolutely necessary. Otherwise, PEMDAS rules would ruin all of the math. So working it down term by term by term, you get 4,096 plus 512 plus 48 plus 4 gets us an answer of 4,660 to convert from 1, 2, 3, 4 in hex. Same algorithm, different problem. So we're trying to convert 3BA4 from hexadecimal into decimal. So same thing as before. We take a look at the ones digit. That's a 4, so 4 times 16 to the 0th power. We take a look at the second digit, A, which is 10. So 10 times 16 to the first power, that's that digit. And then the third digit, B, that's the 256's digit, or 16 squared digit. So B is 11. So 11 times 16 squared, that's that digit. And then the final one where the 3 is, that's 16 cubed, or 4,096. So it's 3 times 16 cubed. And again, you know, the math gets tricky. Arithmetic gets tricky because it's just a lot of numbers we don't normally do, especially by hand these days. It's all done by computer. So, so coming up to this, so 3 times 16 cubed is 12,288. 11 times 16 squared is 2,816. 10 times 16 to the first power is 160. And 4 times 16 to the zeroth power is 4 to give us a grand solution of 15,268 in the conversion. Here's the year turn. We've already done this going from decimal into hexadecimal, so we better get the same value going backwards. So I'd like you to take a look and try to take beef in hexadecimal and convert it into its unsigned decimal conversion. We better get 48,879 out of this, and we do eventually. So what are we doing? So we take BEEF, and same algorithm as we've done in the two previous examples. We take F, which is 15, and we multiply that by 16 to the 0th power, which is, gives us 15 in the bottom row there. That's fine. Next, next E, this is the first E, is 14. And that's multiplied by 16 to the first power, which gives us 224. Moving over, another E, so another 14, multiplied by the 256 digit, the 16 squared, which gets us 3,584. And then the finale here, B, which is 11, that's multiplied by 16 cubed, which is the 4,096's digit. So 11 times 16 cubed gets us the grand total of 45,056. So when you sum up all four of those guys, you get the result that we're expecting from the previous portions of this video, 48,879. There's a lot of tricky arithmetic, fourth grade arithmetic, going on in this video. You know, dividing by 16, you know, when I was going through school, we only divided up to about 12 or so. So it is a number we're not used to dividing by. So the memorization of, you know, of all the divisions and the divisors and the quotients and all the remainders, it's not as inherent as, you know, dividing by other numbers. So you got to watch out for that. But still, if you have any questions, please get a hold of me through email or come into my office hours. Give me a phone call, whatever you need to do. And uh, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time.